Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're looking at Marvel Secret Wars. This is number four. Look at that corner box. Um, that's that's drawn by John Byrne, but I'm going to say that that's not John Byrne's Storm, nor is that John Byrne's Wolverine. But I think everybody else is drawn by John Byrne. I love the corner boxes. Look at this cover, and this this cover is drawn by Bob Layton. It's the Hulk. This I picked this because, except for that black. Spider-Man costume on, what's that, number eight? I think this is the cover that I most remember. Beneath 150 billion tons stands the Hulk. But he's not standing. Well, I guess he is. And he's not happy. Is the Hulk ever happy? Let's open this up. All right, we got Atari Soft video games. All right, and let's look at the Indicia. Right there, volume one, August 1984. And this is, this is like in the same condition as the day I bought it situation hopeless let's look at I, I love these these transported to a strange planet by a force from beyond the universe the mighty superheroes and supervillains of all have been gathered to fight the ultimate war the evil forces attacked first but were defeated several of their number falling captives thus it seems that the heroes under the leadership of captain america were invincible however internal strife divided them and when the villains mounted a second sudden surprise attack the heroes were caught off guard and in disarray and now the victory belongs to the forces of doom all right so we got we got there a, a mighty explosion all right so let's look at the credits jim shooter is the writer bob layton is the penciler john Beatty is the inker joe rosen letterer Chris, uh, christy shield is colorist tom defalco editor uh, just 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 this this to, this started out as a, as a toy line if i remember correctly uh I, I think it was like Hasbro or Mattel, I forget which company, wanted toy, and then they, they decided to, to make a comic book out of it. Or, or maybe Mattel was like, we get a comic book to push our toy line. And this just became like a big legitimate hit. And uh, I, I remember having mixed feelings at the time. I kind of thought it was hokey. The toys I didn't particularly like too much, even though I was a toy collector at the time. I thought the toys were like retro even for the time. But, uh, this series won me over. Secret Wars 1, I thought, was a fun, big hit. And what I did like about it was uh, the comic, like, it showed all the superheroes, like, getting gathered up for the Secret Wars in their own comics. So you were like, oh, wow, look, you know, something's going to happen. And the next issue, we saw the results already. We, we knew that the heroes won. You know, the, everybody got returned. We, we, we knew, like... Like the thing stayed and, and She-Hulk took over his position, stuff like that. But what we didn't know is how. So it was kind of neat to uh, get all of the uh, all, all the consequences. Then we, and then we we puzzling to how do we get there. So I, I like that. That was kind of novel. I don't know. What do you want me to say? All right. So here we got that. that which one is that? Well, that's Thunderball, Ultron, Doctor Doom, Doctor Octopus. That's Titana, the Molecule Man, and looks oh uh, kang the conqueror and th they're all they were gathered by the beyonder and the beyonder is like he's a scientist he's he wants to figure out which one is good which one is better good or evil and owen reese the molecule man it, it, and that's his girlfriend titan uh, no that's his girlfriend volcana so volcana and titana i f f f for some reason i, I kind of get them mixed up look at her she's just feisty and ready, ready to fight there's the absorbing man that's my guy i love the absorbing man Crusher Creel, and they're just they're just wrecking havoc. The, the wrecking crew is just throwing debris at the heroes. The Molecule Man, uh, he could beat the ball with the wave of his hand. His power is he could control molecules, but he's like <laughs> he's been going to a therapist and he's been working out his anger issues, so he's not that good of a villain. But now he's going to show off because Volcana is 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 a uh, you know is a uh, is a uh, what's the word prompting him, teasing him. So he picks up all the mountains. All the superheroes are, 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 are recouping. There's the uh, the female uh, Captain Marvel, the one everybody liked. And then uh, they kind of memory hold her. I thought she got a raw deal with a, a forgotten son of Marvel became Captain Marvel. I, I, I kind of hate when they do that. But what do you want me to do? I, I, can't, I can't change time. There's the Human Torch. There's a... Who, who's this for right here? I'm, I'm getting them mixed up. But anyway... Spider-Man's waking up. Look at, look at, debris coming. So Hulk is going to deal with this. Coloring, here we got some, uh, it's like a coloring book for Oreo cookies. So look at, look at Hawkeye now. Hawkeye, 
I always said this, and uh, I'll stand by it, that to be a bow and arrow superhero in a team with, like, hulks and gods, like, you know, and superpowered being beings and technological geniuses, you have to be brash. That Hawkeye is, is just brash, and I love this. He takes out this missile, you know, bomb at the end, and he divides it in half, and then they're using their powers to uh, push it away so that the, the missile doesn't really hurt them. You know, they're, they're, what, what's that called? Deflecting it away. It's pretty cool. I just love that Hawkeye thinks he's going to deflect the skyscraper with the with bow and arrow. And, and then he does. Why? Because he is brashness personified. Look at Captain America's face. Uh-oh. And the, the mountain range is just hovering above them. I mean, this is a mountain range. It's not a mountain. It's a mountain range. And I kind of think doesn't matter what with without like superpowers you can't like I, I mean i know they survive because of superpowers with the, with the hulk strength but that's not enough so they drop boom and it's enough to make the entire planet vibrate you know and that's oh that's another thing this world is called battle world the beyonder assembled a world out of like a patchwork world out, out of all, all, like, not all other, but, like, a bunch of other worlds. So there's alien technology, there's other races trapped here, innocent bystanders, collateral damage, whatever you want to call it. So it, I, I kind of like that. You know, it's it's a, it's a pastiche world. And that, now they're all celebrating. Oh, and you took them all out. You took them all out. You know, yay, yay, yay. And here's Thor. He's just luxuriating over here with the, with Amora, the, the Enchantress. She's getting everything she wants. She's using her super Asgardian womanly wiles to uh, seduce Thor, but a mountain range just shifted on the entire planet. And keep in mind, this planet has a, it, it's patchwork world, so it's it's not fused together. It's just lumps held together by gravitation. And, you know, so the whole world is just shaking. He's like, and that's enough to store Thor, what's going on? And she's furious. She almost had everything she wanted, which is Thor, you know, so he's, you know, her, her, Plan, plans have been thwarted and like what's going on so now thor as far as he knows he's the last living good guy so what's he gonna do he's gonna take them all out well thor is the god of thunder you know him and gene simmons are the only people i know who are the gods of thunder and i know them all right <laughs> so you know a little arguing you know and she's feeling ashamed she's feeling ashamed of this crusher creel's gonna attack everybody let's get him so now we got you know, a beat down, a beat down on Thor. It, you know, and that's just like a, a superhero comic book tropes. You know, when, when, when there's only one foe, the foe takes out everybody. Like one ninja could take out all the, you know, one ninja is going to fight the Avengers to a standstill. An army of ninjas are going to get taken out like clone troopers. So Thor is just taking up like Ultron can fight the Avengers to a standstill. But what is Thor doing? He's taking them all out. This Titanic just punches them right in the bread, bread basket. You know, there's Kang just hitting him. I mean, oh, every one of these guys is 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 a master villain, like lead, meaning that they could uh they can hold their own against the Avengers. I would put Doctor Oct in that category. He's Spider Man's master villain, but Spider Man is you know not on a power level as the Avengers. And there's the Absorbing Man touching this alien metal. They're, they're just they're just beating the crap out of him. And Thor, what is he doing? He's he's kind of wriggling away so that they they. Uh, they're not used to teamwork, so that's like the advent, the adventures that's that Thor has, is he's he's messing them all up by them getting in each other's ways. And here he is, a uh, lightning bolt to them. He is the god of thunder. And what is Doctor Doom doing? He's putting on a force field, and the force field itself is uh, absorbing the electrical energy and rerouting it into other systems because that's what Doctor Doom does. He's he's a genius, and. Ultron is just blessed, and I love that he's disintegrated. Why? How do we know he's he, only his helmet is left? That's how bad he just got blessed or ruined. And Amora, you know, she may be a, a, a bad guy, but uh, the heart wants what the heart wants, and she almost had Thor. And now, they're like, look, we got part of his cape, his helmet's there. He's disintegrated, he's gone. So, uh now they're going to fight amongst themselves. And Ultra, what does Ultron want? Ultron wants to destroy uh, the uh, all all organic material. Doom wants to control everything. Doom is, Doom is the ultimate egotist. So he has like Ultron under his control. Ultron slay Kang. So boom, taking out Kang. It's like, who's you going to argue with me? I'm in charge. You know, if the Molecule Man... The Molecule Man's weakness is his own personality. He has, he has uh, you know... Uh, uh, 
a submissive personality. You know, he he he's he doesn't have that alpha thing that 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 doom. Go if 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 Molecule Man had had a different personality, he he no doubt in my mind he would be he would be taken over. Now the X Men. They kind of broke off and became their own faction. So the X-Men are not trapped underneath the mountains. And we got a punk rock storm. Colossus over here daydreaming. Look at all this mountain of text thinking about Kitty Pride. And uh, we got Storm over here. Uh, storm. We got uh, Rogue over here in this this costume that nobody particularly likes. It makes her look like a 50-year-old, you know, uh, vice principal or something like that <laughs> it's just not very flattering and i i still love it. night night crawl has got a great costume that costume should never be tampered with i always, i said it in uh about the justice league once you reach an iconic status you should not be tampered with and nightcrawler like your grandmother knows what nightcrawler looks like you know wolverine um i i i, I like the the original costume better but i do like this one so i don't know i'm kind of torn maybe maybe i'm a stepping on my own premise over here and here's xavier xavier is a character i just never liked i always found him to be creepy and manipulative and and uh, kind of a hypocrite cyclops i always liked storm i always liked although i don't like this punk rock look i, I like storm is more i don't know wholesome looking so here's a base with where magneto's hanging out over here it looks like a magnet and it's they got these like living wiggling tendrils it's kind of gross looking and what is he doing? He's making, he's making a, uh, oh, I forget what this is. He he made uh, uh, some sort of device for, for uh, oh, he made her a comb. Jesus. He made a comb for a wasp. He's trying to seduce the wasp over here. And so, so the X-Men and the wasp, as far as they know, are the only heroes that survived. And now the X-Men are showing up. What the X-Men, what are we going to do? Now, remember, I thought this was interesting. And as a little kid, I was like, I was like, oh, my God, that's so clever. But uh, the Beyonder assigned the superhero teams, and he put Magneto in the good guy camp. You know, and they're like, this this guy's a terrorist. He's a war criminal. But he was fighting for a cause beyond his own selfishness. So Beyonder mistook him for a good guy. You know, he has good intentions, just bad implementation. Impl it, 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 how do you say it? Well, he, the way he goes about solving his, his desires is, is wrong. Like they say, the road to hell is, is paved by good intentions. And Magneto, to me, is, is a living example of that. And that's why I liked Marvel characters so much better than DC characters. Because, like, a bad guy like Magneto, you know, that, that is so cool. Whereas Doctor Doom is just selfishness personified. And I've said this a few times, and I'll stand by this, that when they eventually do put Doctor Doom into the uh, Marvel MCU, if the actor is not overacting, he's not playing Doctor Doom properly. <laughs> you, you know, it, he's, a, he's, a, he's a hammer villain. You know, he's, he's a ridiculous, over-the-top, re overacting, you know, I don't know what to say, braggadocious comic book character you know that's all he that's he and if you embrace it don't be embarrassed by the source material i get the feeling that like that marvel is is, is embarrassed by the source material and, and they're like changing it for a modern audience which is never good all right so here we go uh the wasp is betraying magneto which we all knew that was going to happen and she's just blasted him now magneto is a powerhouse but I don't think he could stand like a surprise attack from the Wasp. The Wasp is a veteran superhero. She's she, she's pretty competent. And now the X Men, she, look at she's fighting the X Men. She hits she hits uh, Wolverine. Who is that? That's Rogue Nightcrawler. So she's just she's not battling to uh to take them all out. She's battling to escape. You know. So what are they doing? What are they doing? And here she just takes off. So I I just have to laugh. Ha <laughs> ha! The X Men. You got you got you got trounced by the Wasp. But uh you know. Remember, the Wasp is a veteran Avenger. So now, you know, they're teaming up again. And let's go back to the mountain. The steaming. The mountain. How about a little light? And here are the toys. So it was Mattel. These toys, one, two, three, four. They had five points of articulation. Articulation means where they bend, where they move. And I, I just, and they had these ridiculous shields with stupid holograms. I don't know. I, I thought they were poor quality even for the time i mean considering that dc made one of the most awesome lines of toys the, the superpower lines that were awesome awesome and then marvel countered with, with these pieces of crap it was really disappointing 
And here we have Captain Marvel is making light. That's her power. She controls the electromagnetic spectrum, which is a really, really cool power. And here we have Hulk over here just holding up like whatever mountains he can to to support this little this little cave. Oh, I love that. Just pure darkness. And uh, what is Reed doing? He's just like, uh, because, uh, so he's he's going off on a, on a crusade, uh, a crusade. He's going off like explaining things. Work, he goes working with it is easy. He's talking about Tony Stark. It's brilliant. He's everything. Tony Stark is brilliant. He's like, I got it. Tony Stark is brilliant. And he's like, yeah, well, he goes exactly the kind of self pitying mewling we expect from Hulk or Doctor Banner or whoever you are. You you brute. You just keep using your muscle. That's all you're good for. And he's just like, yeah, well, I may be a brute who's just good for muscle, but even I understand you're just trying to make me mad because the madder I get, the stronger I get. So he he he, he may be dumb, but he ain't stupid. And I always liked that. I thought that was clever. I was like, why is Reed talking like a jerk? Because I'm not as smart as the Hulk. I didn't realize that that Reed was angering Bruce Banner. To, uh, to increase the Hulk strength. So what's he doing? He's using Iron Man's armor. And he's giving it to the Torch. And he's giving it to Captain Marvel. Because they both generate energy. And they're overpowering Iron Man's armor. For this, you know, one-shot power stunt. And Cthum blows to the mountain. Uh, as a kid, I was like, that is cool. That is cool. What's so World War II Army and Navy? I, I, you know, I, I, I always wanted it, but I never got it. So we make, they make a big... Blast hole in the mountain. Iron Man's armor is useless. And here comes Thor. We all knew he wasn't dead. What did he do? He flashed lightning super fast, so that uh, it would and then and then left at like his his top speed. So everybody thought that uh, that he was uh, incapacitated or disintegrated or what what have you. Because uh, we kind of forget that Thor is brilliant too. He's he's a surgeon in his secret identity. Thor Thor ain't no dummy. And now she's going to go look and scout around at the speed of light. Cool power. And then what did we have? We have Galactus over here. Galactus has been immobile. He's like another wild card. He's just standing among this tower, setting out his senses and, and, and probing the planet. Remember, he, he I guess Black uh, Galactus doesn't know what to make of this world. I didn't think of that before because uh, it's a patchwork world made by the Yonder. So I guess he's figuring out if if the world is suitable for him to consume and i don't know is the beyonder putting out some like counterfield to make it difficult for him because the beyonder is supposed to be more powerful than galactus i mean he 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 summoned galactus against galactus's will you know it it's one of the first times galactus was just treated like a chump so there you go so now captain marvel is is a uh, you know monica rambo is finding a, a, another hut a, another village and that the humanoids and these these poor people are uh, you know innocent bystanders in all of this you know and they don't want to have anything to do with it but of course because of plot powers one of them has psionic latent healing powers and then johnny's a dog so he starts hitting on it because that's that's what johnny does johnny storm is a always hitting on women always hitting on women okay stop with this let's turn johnny storm bisexual nonsense johnny storm is always hitting on women we see his thoughts i've been seeing johnny storm's thoughts since i was in diapers he likes girls knock it off all you weirdos all right so now ben Grimm is like being unstable he turns back into a he, he's turning back into bed Grimm. he's turning into the thing and it's it's on this world for whatever reason he has the ability to transform into in, in, into the thing, and that and it kind of messed everything up because he was in a Ben Grimm form when he got attacked when they got attacked, and he, he got knocked out. So now he's in thing form because he feels like he let down the team. Because Ben is, I always say this, he's the cornerstone of the Fantastic Four. He's the heart. He wants to protect everybody, and he feels that he let them down. He he was being selfish, turning into Ben Grimm, you know, when he should have been the, the thing. That would not happen if he was the thing. That's what he's thinking. And now. Galactus is moving. Okay. Oh, no. So we all know what that means. Galactus is going to consume the planet. Bonus certificate for Marvel. Okay. So you're going to get a bonus certificate if you subscribe. High Adventure. What is this? Amazing High Adventures. Oh, I don't know anything about this. I got to look. I got to look this up. I got to look this up. Anybody know anything about this? Carlin. Okay. And here we got some graffiti. You want to call this kid? Call, yeah, call the numbers on the, on the bathroom wall. So there you go. This is uh, Secret Wars number number four. I, I love this series. The first series was good. The second series was so bad. 
like I didn't know the term at the time, but like I I hate collected it. You know, I I I would get it just to make fun of how bad it was. I mean, that's the excuse. I would have gotten it anyway because at that point I was like a, a compulsive Marvel collector. I had to get comics, even the ones that I didn't like, and that's terrible. And I know that. But I would joke about it and like laugh, like "Oh, look, look, look how bad it is! I can't wait to read it." But it was, it was awful. Secret Wars two was awful. But Secret Wars one, I really did enjoy. It was everything comic books were supposed to be: over the top, high stakes, battles, some cleverness once in a while. You know, yeah, yeah, it was hokey. But then again, with you know, comic books are kind of hokey. But you got to embrace the hokiness. Embrace the hokiness. All right. <laughs> So there you go. That's this. The, I I really I really like this series. I, matter of fact, I, I I think I'm gonna sit down and reread the all all twelve of the of the first series. All right. So thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. You know, request videos. All right. I, I'm kind of like agonizing over what videos to showcase again. Uh, you know, and I appreciate that that subscribers are coming in fast. Uh, I don't know. I'm having so much fun. All right. I'll see you guys. Oh, and so many comments. Jeez, every every you know, at lunch hour, coffee break, I just answer comments, and that and I'm still small enough that I try to answer every comment. If I did not answer your comment, that's because there's, there's filters that I can't seem to turn off. So I do see that there's comments that I don't know if just I can't see them or, or whatever, but I, I don't do that. I, I, I don't censor anybody's comments. The only reason I would ever remove a comment is because you, you put something, somebody's personal information. But uh, nobody has done that. You guys have been, this has been like the, the perfect perfect community everybody's been really really cool and fun and, and and interesting so if i have not answered your comment that's because i can't see it okay so i don't want anybody to get mad at me i'm, I'm just trying to have some fun talking about comic books i'm not I'm not out here to hurt anybody's feelings all right so i'll see you tomorrow bye bye